right. Sims Welcome, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Tony Pellegrino, and thank you for joining us for another edition of our Tech Talk on Tuesdays and Thursdays, today being Tuesday. Today, I've got uh, Debbie, Alex, and Jamie here in the studio to help me out. And uh, we really appreciate you guys joining us. We've got a very exciting show by popular request. Um, almost 500 of you filled out that form on our website. So now we know all the topics we need to cover and uh, suspension was one of those. So um, you guys are gonna like that. Um, this again was a requested topic. So um, as always, we welcome your questions and comments. We've got uh, Debbie here to read those off to us. So uh, make sure you include your, uh, you know, the year and model of your Jeep. That will be helpful for me to answer the questions. Featured products. Today, um, one of the things that I've never talked about on the show before was this cool little bag that we have that fits in the back hoop on our tire carrier. This would probably fit in the front hoop too, but it's really designed for the back hoop. It's got a small pocket here for gloves and little things, and then it's got a big pocket that'll hold a, easily hold a 20 foot uh, toe strap or whatever you want, and it just Velcros in. The cool thing is nobody's gonna steal it because your tire sandwiches it up against there. So um, it works out really nice. We have PRP make these exclusively for us. So uh, nice heavy duty, it's kind of a, waterproof material so your stuff won't get soaked inside if you get a chance check that out that that is my featured product for today any questions so far deb uh we just got a lot of friends that have logged in i'm jamie you were just reading my mind <laughs> uh sam walker uh pat uh i'm sorry nat perrin uh stephen horsch tim cahill uh kelly sims sam nice. rupert jeff lone uh michael rorick Awesome. Ed West, Terry Mode, Trenton Delano. Uh, he says he needs those JK front aluminum half doors. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Reirda. So we got lots of lots of friends on with us awesome. today. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us. I, I really appreciate it. Hopefully we will have some good stuff for you to learn about today. All right. <clears throat> oh, um, yes. Uh, back onto the website, we always have lots of questions. Remember the blue bar, when you mouse over that, it'll drop down something like this. And uh, we've got hot links over on our Tech Talk that lead you to um, Facebook or over to YouTube if you're not on Facebook. Remember our search box is super smart and you can type anything in there, part of the description, part of the part number, and it'll pull up everything you're looking for. All right, <clears throat> let's talk suspension. So this is, I don't know what this is. It looks like an LJ um, factory or, you know, short arm suspension uh, that uses the factory brackets. So most people, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and dumb this down and do an overview of um, kind of the basics, right? And then this hopefully makes sense by the time we're at the end. Um, most people walk into an off-road shop and say, I want a lift kit, tires, and wheels. Well, this is what you're going to get sold. They're going to sell you something that bolts onto the factory brackets. Um, it might have urethane. It might have rubber in the joints. It's, it's going to be fairly cheesy is what I'm going to call it. They put spacers in to lower down your belly pan to keep your driveline angles from screaming. Um, otherwise, you'll burn up the drive shafts or get a nasty vibration. Um, you can see that on this suspension now, if you ever looked at your factory suspension, they were designed to be flat, okay? So these are now angled. And um, that is not great because now every time you hit something, the suspension has to kind of absorb it and try and go up, meaning go past, you know, vertical to go up and absorb that impact. Now the rear, that's a little easier because it's like a trailing arm, right? Uh, but it's still very well down. Now, where this affects you is when you go to climb something, right? So that, that rear suspension is sticking down and it starts doing some really weird stuff. Um, I see Debbie standing up. Does that mean we have questions? 
<laughs> I don't like I don't like having to raid my hand. Uh, we've got first of all, we've got Brave Motorsports joining oh, us awesome. via, via chat. So I just wanted to let yeah, you know Dave that Dave from Brave. Don't don't Dave get mixed from up. Brave. Dave from Brave. Yeah. Uh, Brave is one of our dealers in Texas. He's installed our Elite and our Tracer systems uh, for his customers. He's also built a lot of his own suspensions. So um, he is on today to kind of be that third party to help me answer questions as well. So uh, Michael Rorick has a question um, asking, what is the general lead time on Axel's ordered 60 front and full float <laughs> rear 70? Um, I think right now uh, you're probably looking at like eight to 10 weeks would be my guess if you don't already have your order. And if you've got your order in, um, and by the way, when we quote deliveries, um, it's, we don't give you a real quote until you have an order in because we have so many people calling to ask the same question. And then they, they wait eight weeks and call back and go, okay, are they in stock? Well, it's not how it works. They're we gone. sold a bunch since then. Yeah. So. Uh, Andy Orlando, <clears throat> um, off topic question. Any chance of some interior bags for the JLJT half doors from Simpson or anyone else? I can't run PRP bags with Simpson seats. <laughs> you could seam rip the little tag and just make it go away. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably not. We have to order those in a pretty big quantity in order to get now, you know, you might be able to have something custom made, but right now PRP is going to be our supplier for a while on that. Um, okay. Back to it. Any questions on the, the short arm stuff, Deb? Uh, not that I can see yet. <clears throat> okay, so this applies to everything. Everything Jeep Wrangler, um, you know, you're, you're stuck with uh, bolting to these factory mounts. By the way, there's, there's upper mounts that are hiding up here and up here in the back uh, where the upper arms go. So I just want to show you what's happening the moment you put a lift kit in, okay? Now, on a gen right kit, this is called a long arm, and you can see we bring, the mounts were here, and we move them into the middle and flatten out the links. This way, as you hit bumps, you don't have to go up before you, uh, or, you know, pass that point. It's, it's basically binding in the suspension, okay? So this is a much, the geometry is much better. You'll hear people talk about, oh yeah, long arm kit, geometry is much better. Okay, so just familiarize yourself with that short arm versus long arm. By the way, this uses none, not one, zero of the factory mounts, okay? The, the hardest thing I think for people to get through their head is that the factory mounts were only designed for a Jeep that was on little tiny tires um, with short little arms and it was designed to go on the road and through the snow. So um, now we're talking about long travel, bigger tires, um, so we don't use any of the factory mounts. And the moment you can get over that, the moment your life is going to be much better. What else you got? Devin Olson, what are the best off-road joints? Himes, Johnny joints, Metal Cloak, Duraflex. Also, what is the best way to maintain Heim joints? Okay. All great questions. So, um, this is a Johnny joint. And um, this has a special grade of urethane inside. It also has grease ports um, all through it. There's, there's two halves to this. And this surrounds a ball just like a Heim, right? So if you look at a Heim like this, it's, it's just like this, except for there's a urethane coating around the ball. So the urethane isolates noise and vibration. Okay, so it, it dampens all of these things. When you use a Heim, and they make this in a bigger version just like this, um, this is metal to metal. So this is going to transfer noise. So if you, if you put this um, in the suspension of your street-driven vehicle, it's gonna drive you crazy. So um, it's going to transfer every little noise, every little vibration, and um, when they get dry, they're gonna squeak like crazy and you're not gonna be very happy. So you really wanna stick with something like this, okay? Now this also is set up with a grease port right on it, so they're easy to grease. And you just give it a few squirts to see a little bit come out and you know that the ball will move. This one's brand new, so the ball's tight. In fact, all these things are. 
Um, so that's, that's what you need to know about that. Now, this is one of those hymns that I call a fakey. So when you see a heim where they squirt a little urethane around it, that's no good. If you have these on your vehicle, you take them off and you throw them in the garbage. Okay? You don't even keep them as spares. You don't give them to friends. What you want is a genuine FK heim. Okay? This is the real deal. This is what's used on aircraft, race cars. This is what we use on every Genrite Jeep. Okay? So just be aware of that. Okay, and of course those come in all different sizes. More questions. Gabriel Pyle sold his YJ with JK axles to get a four-door for the family. Going for a 2012 and up JKU, should I get a Rubicon or just get a Sahara and upgrade the axles? Um, <clears throat> so once you start, once you pass that threshold in 2008 and you get into a JK, um, you've got to understand that those vehicles are heavily computerized. Um, the processors inside do not have the capability of understanding what's happening on your vehicle. So you really want to get a Rubicon. You're better off to start with a Rubicon. The, uh, your ability to use a programmer to tweak uh, things within it, shift points, gear ratios, all that stuff is much better with a Rubicon. So you all, in my opinion, you always want to start with a Rubicon, okay? Um, I do, well, before I go on to that, I do want to address one more thing. So uh, the other joints that have vulcanized rubber or urethane, you know, straight urethane, like old school, I don't even have any in here, um, I would avoid those. So um, a couple of those ones that, that gentleman mentioned um, are just, you know, straight rubber. That stuff just breaks down and falls apart. This is uh, a long-term solution, okay? They're 45 bucks, whatever they are, 50 bucks, and um, it's greasable, rebuildable. This is what you want, big intra-quarter shank. That's what you want. This is the only thing that I'll run on any of my vehicles, and that's the only thing that holds up. Okay, what else you got? Uh, Jacob Stewart, can you do a four-link on an O3 TJ with your Genrite gas tank? On, uh, can I do a four link? Can you do a, a, a four link on an O3 TJ <clears throat> yes. with your Genrite gas yes. tank? Um, so it doesn't require our gas tank to do the four link, but um, when you do the four link, if you get our gas tank, then you can move the axle back, which is what you're going to want to do because you're going to want to be on bigger tires. You know, it's like I'm, I'm trying to help you cut to the chase. So, um, yeah, if jeeping's your thing. You've, you've found the right guys because we're going to get you all the parts you need to make it trick. David uh, Coburn has a good question. Okay. Tony, do you modify your kits that go to market based on what you find with your test vehicles, such as Terramoto? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The, basically, what we do is we'll build something um, either, uh, let's, let's, let's start way back, right? So way back, it was my YJ. And my YJ, we put on and cut off all different suspension configurations. Uh, we tried leaf springs. We tried um, all, all different configurations of three and four link suspension and uh, learned a lot of things that way. Then we got into ultra four racing where we were doing uh, double triangulated four links front and rear. Um, we were, you know, long travel, high horsepower, trying all kinds of stuff and going fast. So crawling and going fast. That's when we took all of that information and started bringing that into what is today the JK Elite. And um, when, when you look at whether it's the Tracer or the JK Elite, um, what you're getting is basically the same parts that you would use to build a buggy, an off-road buggy, but it's got a Jeep body on it. So um, that's, that's a big difference. And, and, you know, keep in mind, you know, one of those off-road buggies, they, they may make great callers, but forget trying to drive that stuff on the street. It's going to be squirrely and, um, you know, it's, it's not very fun. So um, we're trying to give you something that you can drive all around. And absolutely, we, we take everything we learn from that. Material thickness, bolt size, the quality of materials, um, who the suppliers are, you know, it, it, we take all of that into account and that all I, all I want to do is offer you 
the best possible product. By the way, if, if, you're, if you haven't watched the show very much or you don't know very much about me, when I build the JK Elite, I didn't care if I ever sold one, okay? I built it for me. I wanted the most badass JK and suspension that, was a, that could be possibly had, and I didn't care if I sold one. And then, of course, shortly after that, when people realized what it was, they started calling us and wanted to buy it. So, um, yeah. What else you got? You ready for another sure. question? Sure. Um, Ed West uh, has a 1977 CJ, 14 inch, 2.5 King IBP shocks, um, Rock Jock 60 front, Rock Jock 70 rear, 500 horsepower LS3. Question When you went from 40 inch to 42 inch tires on the old Growler, what changes did you make to accommodate? the 42 inch tires. Yeah, I tried not to change um, anything. I mean, there's, look, um, the, the reality is 42s may not fit your build, right? Because um, maybe where you mounted the links is gonna be too wide and every time you turn, it's just gonna be rubbing there. And, and the last thing you wanna do is keep putting more offset wheels on. Um, but you're, you're definitely gonna have to do some trimming, you know, of the fender well to uh, open it up to make sure that tire's got room to go st to stuff in there. But I really didn't want to change the ride height, the setup. I didn't want to change anything. I just wanted to put bigger tires on. So um, you can try it, but it's, uh, it, it does put a lot more stress on things. So it's like adding a locker. You're, you're gonna find stuff that's gonna break now that you had no idea. Now, like adding a locker, it's also gonna take you a lot of places a lot easier and than you've ever been before too. So, yep, it's it's cool. It is for sure. What else you got? Uh, Cord Killinger, what's the telltale sign that a Heim needs to be rebuilt? Mm. Slop. So, um, what'll happen is, is that like this one's tight, right? This is brand new. I, I don't even think I could, even if I shove something in here, I don't even think I can move it. No, it's super tight. Okay, so these are, um, Teflon lined, um, but what'll happen is, is they'll start to move and then this will move really easy. So basically if you grab your tie rod and you can move it back and forth and it's kind of sloppy, that's first sign that it's getting there. Next is, say this is on a track bar, so let's turn this way. You can actually grab the body and yank it back and forth and you'll feel a little bit of play in here. Now, the bolt better not be loose. Almost all of the ones that people come to me complaining about death wobble, I go over and the darn bolts loose. So make sure your bolts are tight and use good stuff. Don't use coarse thread, nasty, non-locking nuts and stuff. You gotta use good stuff. We sell all the good stuff on our website. There's no, you have no excuse for saying I didn't know. We've got it all. So if it's sloppy this way, um, now the reality is these aren't gonna just like fall apart and leave you stranded. But, but what's gonna happen is, is the performance is going to diminish, right? So you just wanna keep an eye on this stuff. What I usually do is, before they get clapped out, I'll take this off, put it in my tool bag, I'll get a brand new one, put it on, I know the old one's good to go in a real bind, it'll help me or somebody else, and uh, that's all you need to know. Now, if you wanna keep these from squeaking, every once in a while, put a drop, one drop of grease here, one drop of grease here, rotate it, get that grease worked in, and that'll keep them from squeaking. Okay, what else you got? Anything? Uh, Dave, oh yeah, Dave Rupert. What, uh, what does Tony think about the adjustable phony joints that have the ring you tighten up with use? So, um, that what they're doing is um, all of those are copies of what is the original Johnny. So the original Johnny is a solid back with a snap ring, right? So this gets preloaded, you pop in the snap ring, and um, these are, are good for many, many years. I mean, I think I ran my first set of these on the Terramoto for six or seven years before I even rebuilt them. So um, the other ones, what they do is the materials inside start to break down so you've got a, they have a little nut that you take out a set screw, you turn it, you put the set screw back in. Well, you know, although that may seem like a good solution to you um, or the guy behind the counter selling it to you, um, the bottom line is, is it's, it's, you know, for 
what another 20 bucks or not even that you can get the real deal and and not be doing that so what else you got Trenton Delano wants to know if your yellow hat is on sale on the website <laughs> <laughs> should I answer that question sure. that would be a hard no unless it accompanies a check to pay for the company yes there is only one yellow hat <laughs> And it is available, but the entire company goes, <laughs> goes with it. With it. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, funny. You, you better keep moving and, and on. By the we're way, not going to get to your content. Um, we're not going to get into this today, but maybe on some other show when a bunch of other hats are in here. Um, the color of your hat, if you work here at Genrite, is the hierarchy of the company. So we'll explain <laughs> that someday. <laughs> All right, so here's another shot of the short arm on a front you can see how that's really angled down and uh, there's that upper control arm by the way that's you know like folded sheet metal that's totally cheesy and the bolts are tiny you know so um just just not a good setup again i just want to reinforce with you guys how you can only do so much with the stock brackets now if you go out and off-road a lot What's going to happen is this is going to be bashed anyways, and it's time for you to cut that off and get rid of it anyways. Okay. Um, all right. So here we are back underneath. Um, again, short arm. This one's not quite as ridiculously angled down. Um, this probably looks more like most of the Jeeps that are out there. Um, you can see the, the upper control arm mounts when there's another one up here with those coming off in the lower control arm. At least this guy got real Johnny joints, so he's got something going for him, and this thing won't get clapped out too quickly. So um, again, remember the short arms are gonna have to work even harder to make that range of motion. So typical Jeep with a um, lift kit on it uh, has about a 10 inch travel shock. Okay, so whether it's a short arm or a long arm, they're still supplying that same 10, maybe even a 12 inch shock, and then you're really working all that stuff. So just keep that in mind. I know this is not the stuff they talk to you about at, a, at an off-road shop, okay? This is the stuff that I'm telling you. And if you haven't already figured it out, and it's the reason why your stuff keeps wearing out or breaking off or whatever else, um, stop just macgyver it back together and fix it right for the last time okay so here's um, a gen right undercarriage right so you can see the arms are longer and uh, we only use one upper link the the in the factory kit where there's four links it's binding that whole thing is binding the whole time and uh the the whole thing's fighting itself now that that gives it some stability and some good road manners and some of those other things but what it's also doing is wearing stuff out okay now remember we, we talked about this in the last live or the one before that um, when ernie was here from torco you know a lot of these things from the different manufacturers that, that are trying to sell you stuff are planned obsolescence right they want you to wear this stuff out they want you to buy a new one okay that's i don't know about you but that's not what i work hard and bring home money for every day. I want to buy stuff once or as seldom as possible, but buy the right stuff. I don't want to work on it out on the trail. So um, you can see we changed out the cross members. Everything's big, beefy, same on the axle. The shocks are mounted way out toward the wheel um, where the shock and spring control are. So that way you're getting the best uh, stability and dampening control. You, you'll hear me use those words a lot along with predictability okay when i drive my jeep i want to know exactly what it's going to do so many vehicles um, i've even just gotten in them and move them forward scare me because i have no idea what they're about to do okay um, here's another shot going the other way of that three link you can see how it flexes really nicely um, and again the all the spring and dampening control are right in line and uh, giving it that maximum stability okay any questions on this stuff deb uh let's see <clears throat> we've got um a question from raymond taylor he currently has a tj but he wants an lj what's your opinion on tj6 conversions for us lj wannabes <laughs> so um 
we're, we're working on that conversion. Um, we started with uh, Jamie doing the growler. So that's, that was the first one that got converted. And now it happens to be a YJ, but the, the tubs are similar enough to a TJ. And uh, we're, our plan is to offer that, not just the frame extension, everybody can, you know, give you guys some tubing and tell you to weld it on. It's that whole inner cargo area and inner fender wells. Um, we're gonna give you a complete solution that makes sense and uh, gives you the ability to do that. So it's not far off, I can tell you that. Thanks for asking. Uh, Ricker Goldsboro, a 2004 LJ long arm kit, like what is in the picture behind you using data 44 available question mark. Um, but so budget tracer kit. Right, right. And I, I get that. Um, it depends on the tire size, right? If you tell me, okay, I'm never going bigger than 37 stony. Um, the, the downside, I mean, you know, sometimes you can find a high opinion 44, um, you know, I'm, I believe in doing it once and being done with it, but I understand some people have to kind of step there. Um, so, you know, do what you can. It's possible. It is possible, but um, what's going to happen is, is that, you know, the axle is more narrow than this. So um, you can't run as big of a tire because the tire starts getting into everything as you articulate. So it, it is possible. And on our website, um, back where I showed you, go to the galleries in the blue bar, drop down there's a jk a gray jk in there on 37s that kept all the factory 44 stuff with an elite kit so something to look at stephen williams how long do the mounts hang off the frame in the uh, picture on the monitor behind you so you know all of this stuff if you notice none of the brackets hang down below the axle these are all flush with the belly skid plate so um, this stuff is just big enough to fit the Johnny joint. So um, we can go back just a little bit here. I mean, this is, this is a JK, so these are flush with the body. Andrews. He made that comment when it was the side picture. This one? No, keep going. No. Keep going one more. There you go. This one. So, you know, that's the thickness of a Johnny joint. So, you know, it's probably three inches, I'd say. And uh, this still provides a 21-inch belly clearance, I think is what and, it is. And it's smooth. And it's, it's smooth. smooth. It's catch on. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you, get, if you grab something, you know, a rock or a root or a log or something, it'll roll off the control arm across the belly on the other and grab the next wheel and, and you're out of there. So, um, now the, I prefer what we have on the JK Elite where um, it's completely flat, where everything goes up in there but it wasn't possible to do the, the, the frame section on a TJ, YJ, LJ, CJ is smaller than it is on a JK. So on a JK, we can do a whole bunch of different stuff or JL for that matter. So what else you got? Corey Merrill, uh, do you run your Himes in line or out of phase on your arms? I run them in line, I do. Um, I mean, we do have, we've got some uh, rear bridges that, that turn them uh, just because uh, what it does is it keeps the whole assembly shorter. So we run the bolt down this way and um, it's, it's fine. Like uh, actually I, on the JK Elite, the rear upper is turned uh, up on the frame side. I don't know if we have a picture of it in here, but it, it would be, but these are all straight, but on the, the rear it's turned. Just that, that uh, the two front uppers. uppers. And okay, so this is, you know, this is a factory JK. Before we were kind of looking at TJ stuff. Here's factory JK stuff. You can see these brackets, how they hang down, the cross member. You can see this one's already been hit. Um, and, uh, you know, they got these funky square arms that are already kind of bent and. You know, there's, there's just a lot of stuff hanging down there um, asking to get hit, where over here, it's all smooth. I mean, this is literally the same Jeep. You can see the same little oil pan. So, um, yeah, just a completely different. And now, um, we didn't have it on for this one, but we make a nice transmission and uh, engine oil pan skid for the JK Elite. 
like we do for the tracer. Yep. Bobby Bellomi, I may have missed this, but what is the belly height difference between the JK Elite, the LJ Tracer, and the new JL EXS? Uh, the, the belly heights will actually all be the same. Uh, so if you're, if you're talking about you know 40 inch tire, it's gonna be, you, you have the ability to move it a little bit based on preload, but you're gonna be anywhere from you know 20 to 21, 22 inches, depending on what kind of wheeling you're gonna do. Um, if you're going for the, the big boy trails out at the hammers, you know, you're going to want to be in that 21 or so range, or you're going to be bellying on everything. So, Stephen Horsch, if you stretch a TJ, what is the magic number you want to get to? Well, that depends on the tire size. So if you're on a 37, 100 inch is the magic number. If you want to go to a 40, it's like... 102, 105, you know, right in that range. Um, some people believe it's longer. Some people believe it's 110, you know. But the reality is in a, in a TJ or YJ, that's, you know, you got the wheels clearly sticking out, you know, on both ends. Which, you know, if it's a trail rig only, knock yourself out. But if you want to drive that thing on the street, the, the highway patrol is not going to be very happy with you. So, um, but, and you know, on a JK, that's super simple because a four door is 116 inch wheelbase and mine's 118. So, um, and on 40s, that, that rocks, you know, it's, it's absolutely awesome. So that's got the perfect break over, takes me everywhere I want to go. So, yep. Uh, some guy named Rick, Nick Repinich <laughs> asked. Oh, this guy's trouble. <laughs> is the Heim designed to pivot on a greased bolt? or the bolt clamps the center and it pivots in the hind? Ah, very good question. Um, it, leave, this, leave it to the engineer. Yes, so um, on, actually on all of these, there's a ball inside here. And the ball, so you clamp it, and then the ball is what's supposed to actually move, not, not on the bolt. So by the way, you get strength and amount, with what they call double shear, right? So single shear is this, right? Double shear is this. And then you put the bolt through and you clamp it down. That makes it really strong. Okay, it's almost as strong as welding it. You know, having a, a well fastened bolt. So um, you really you gotta. That's why we're, I'm always telling you guys to check your your torque on your bolts. It's super important. The moment something gets loose, it's it's not long to live. I can tell you that. So, but great question. We got lots that? of questions. Okay, keep them coming. J Jacob Stewart, I have an 03 TJ and am trying to decide what is best. When the build is done, I'd like to still be able to do highway and DD if I like to. I'm also on East Coast, and that is terrain I crawl on. Would it be a horrible idea to do a trailing arm in the rear and why? So um, trailing arms is a whole nother dynamic. So... Um, so what, what was the Jeep? What we start with? Was it a TJ or an 03 MJ? TJ. TJ. Okay. <clears throat> so um, like you've seen, we use on our Ultra 4 cars and stuff. Um, you can use a trailing arm. That, that starts to change uh, a lot of other dynamics, including the fact that um, you potentially no longer crawl anything, that you launch stuff. Okay. So um, uh, just... Like, guys, you got to be careful what you wish for. Where I almost started this whole tech talk was to have you imagine like the absolute ideal vehicle, right? Where you say, okay, you know, would I use 44s or would I use 60s? If I did, would it be high pinion or low pinion? And, you know, start, start like walking you through. Would the belly hang down or would the belly be flat? Would it be you know, double triangulated, we, you'd have to answer all these questions, right? So at the end of the conversation, basically where you get to is if it's a LJ, our tracer, and if it's a JK, our elite, because that's what we've done. We've, we've taken the absolute, I, I didn't have to start with anything. I just cleaned the slate and went, I'm going to build the best thing. So um, but it's got to fit under body. So if you're, if you're designing an ultra four car, a buggy, you know, something like that, you you can move things into areas where you don't have body or, or you just don't have constraints of up travel because there is no body. So, um, but that's, that's 
to me, th those conversations don't even exist. That's, that's not you guys. If you're watching this show, you've got a Jeep that you want to drive on the street. Even if it's just to get you, you know, like if you're in Moab, when you come off the trail, all the way back to your hotel or your RV. So um, these are the things you got to think through. If you decide to make yourself a dedicated trail rig, that means somebody's got to schlep back around and, you know, trailer, you know, something back over to get you. It, it's... It's not ideal. It's not ideal. Okay. All right. What else you got? Jim Smith, 2021 JLU Willys, two-inch Mopar lift kit with MT35s. Would a TerraFlex short arm kit improve the ride quality over stock control arms? Okay. Um, ride quality is going to come in, in that scenario, right? Because you're not talking about a big lift kit, right? This is, this is you're down low still. Um, is going to come from springs and shocks, okay? The, the control arms are doing very little in your situation. Um, in, in terms of if you're talking about ride quality on the road, on a fire road, um, that's really all about springs and shocks. Yep. And air pressure in your tires. Yeah. What else you got? Funny comments about now, the, the yellow hat. Now, the, the question about the control arms is, you know, you upgrade and it's going to last and they won't get clapped out and, you know, give you death wobble. You know, that's, you know, just depends on. But if you're just talking ride, that's my answer. This is a good one. Okay. Tim Cahill, AEV claims to regain your stock geometry with their lifts. Yep. I have the 3.5 on mine. What are your thoughts on that lift? Okay, so they do that by a bunch of brackets that move stuff. And, and basically what they're doing is they're, they're maintaining the, the control arm positions by giving you relocation brackets. Now, I call that an erector set. I hate that stuff. Um, if that was my kit, I would take those bolts out and I'd get out there with a welder and I'd weld that stuff on. Now, that said, you gotta remember the bracket, the relocation bracket they gave you, and, and almost every lift kit except for ours includes these relocation brackets. And um, you just got to remember, you're attaching it to this crappy, thin stock stuff. Okay, so even if you decide to weld it on there or you got 10 bolts to hold it on, um, it's still just that flimsy little stuff. Okay, so that, that's all they're doing. And um, that what, what they're after is they want to make it not dive and they want to make it corner well. And that's, that's how you do it is relocate the uh, track bars and some of that stuff. Yep. Kevin Cavallo, benefits of longer links versus something like a mid-arm kit. Uh, so, you know, the mid-arm kit became popular because um, what, let's, let's go back. to that side view again. So the mid-arm kits became popular because they were saying, well, you know, if I drop off something, I'm gonna hit the arm. So I'm gonna try and tuck that up, you know, up here a little shorter. Not as short as a short arm, but somewhere in here. Um, <clears throat> that didn't last long uh, because then we started, you know, using the big um, 7075 aluminum links and, you know, a uh, nice inch and a quarter shank. You know, these are, this is a chromoly body, right? This is good quality stuff. So you can land on these things pretty hard and uh, it's not gonna be a problem. Back when they were steel and, um, you know, remember these can only be made, you can see perfectly straight because they're 7075. So some of the other arms I'm showing you are all bent all over and so I, I don't like that stuff. That That's, the moment you start putting bends in an arm, you're asking for trouble. It's, it, it has a, uh, the ability to kink and bend and uh, you know, get worse. So you know, here, in this case, they did it for crash stuff. You know, the, remember, the factory's gotta meet the safety standards. Okay, so um, I don't know about you, but I've seen some pretty controlled crashes coming down Chewy and some of the other obstacles out there, so I don't want that. And then uh, let's take a look at our next slide here. So here's another example, right? 
So this is a rear suspension on a JK. So you can see the upper control arm, the lower control arm, and then there's a track bar back here. Technically, this is a five link, right? So this is this got even more going on. And uh, these are all outboard mounted uh, links and they kept the shocks and everything, you know, are, are more inboard. So um, again, you know, for getting you to buy one of their products and get you into a Jeep, did a great job. Now you want to make it good? Totally different story. And uh, by the way, I hate these kind of uh, bump stop spacers. You know, they, they give you a lift kit, but you have to take up what you just gained with another spacer so you actually have the exact same travel as you did from stock. And that just doesn't work for me. So, yeah. If you haven't been under your vehicle, you might want to crawl under there and take a look. It's uh, not great. So, um, here's ours. And you don't see any of those spacers in here. You get all 14 inches of travel. And um, that's, that's really nice. And the, the triangulation is what keeps the rear end under the vehicle, not a track bar. Okay, so again, I don't have anything fighting. This moves very smoothly. And uh, that's what you're after. That's, that's how things aren't gonna wear out. You're gonna get long life. All the arms are straight, right? You've got big, beefy mounts everywhere. They're flat on the bottom. Nothing hangs down except for the ring gear. And uh, even that's been optimized. So um, this is what you want the underside of your vehicle to look like. More questions, Deb? Yeah, Ken Brandt uh, mm. for a JKU asks, what sway bars do you recommend running? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> then that's the answer. Um, here, here's the thing. If, if you've got to have sway bars, um, the way Genrite does it is we do a rear sway bar only, okay? In the front, there's too much going on. In fact, I think we got a front picture in here, right? Is it the, is it the next one? There's another rear. There's a front picture. Okay, so we, we do high steer. You got all this set in there. You know, the problem is once you start introducing a sway bar, it's like, where does it go? There's no clean way to do it in the front. And plus, you know, you got the tires turning. So um, the, the rear sway bar works fine. Um, and uh, if you've never tried it, I guarantee you, we've got a video on our website. You can see a Jeep without and then with it. I describe it as handles like a Ferrari. It, it, it probably allows you to go faster than you should in a big lifted vehicle. Okay. Um, but if you're not going to, if you don't want to buy a Genrite one, that's fine. The Curry one is the next, uh, which would be Rock Jock now. Uh, they're anti rock. Uh, sway bar and those you have to put front and rear so uh, Esther Parrott Newcomb asked what is the diaper looking thing on the differential ah floor? so that, that's a great question they actually call this the jock strap so a normal differential is cast iron right and um, so is this one but then what they do is they put that that's made out of a special AR steel it's the same stuff they make a tractor bucket with so it's really really tough and um, you can drag that over rocks and all that stuff. So what will happen is if you go out wheeling a lot and your differential, you know, you're going over rocks and stuff, you'll notice it's starting to wear the cast iron away. And in some cases, people will start getting leaks. Well, this is a replaceable thing and it's super tough. Like I've never replaced one. They're, they're super tough. And then uh, Genrite makes this little piece that goes over uh, to keep the front edge from getting caught. So um, it's, it's kind of easy to do. But yeah, if we, uh, if we go back, there, there's the, you know, from underneath what it looks like. But you know what guys like Curry and Dynatrack have done is they've narrowed everything down so that you only have the bare minimum uh, right where the ring gear is. And then everything else has been trimmed away. So if we go back to, uh, Alex, I'm going to go back one more, two more. Here. So if you look at this, here's a, a standard differential and it's got all this extra stuff that's not doing you any good hanging down. In fact, all that's just gonna catch you. They even leave a big old cast rib hanging on the bottom. Um, so, you know, if you drag that across enough rocks, it'll be gone and, you know, but um, it's also gonna hang you up every time it hits. So what, what the real guys want is smooth. We want everything smooth. And that's, that's what you're looking at. 
Ryan Boudreau, what are, what are the benefits of the single triangulated versus the double triangulated system and how are the road manners for each? Okay, very good question. So this is single triangulated. So you can see the upper links are triangulated, the bottoms are almost straight, okay? That's, uh, that's what we call single. This is double. So now the lowers are brought in, the, the uppers are brought out. Here you can see the turned, the Johnny joints turned like so instead of like that on that upper link. It's because it's up against the bottom of the body. We got everything up as high as we can. So the double triangulated, um, Let's see, what's the best way to explain this? I, 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 this is where I wish I had a video. Because on the Terramoto, it's double triangulated. So when, when you go through something, the rear tire will actually help keep you on the obstacle. Uh, many cases, when you've been out wheeling, you've had to like go further with the front wheel so that the rear wheel will climb. Well, you don't have to on double triangulated. The rear wheel will follow. Um, the single triangulated, provides a little bit more stability because the roll center is different. So this, as you can imagine, it's double triangulated. It, it, it's like uh, riding a motorcycle, right? It, it'll, like, it, it has no uh, resistance whatsoever other than what's in the shocks and the springs. So where the single triangulated has a little bit of resistance to it. So um, that's going to give you a little bit more stability. Now the reality is, this is put on a 118 inch long wheelbase vehicle. You don't even notice it. Um, and because of the way we do the front three link, if I can go back. Somewhere in here. Um, let's see if we got one more picture. So what, ah, it's kind of hard to see. But um, our track bar, which is right back here, um, what this does is it cancels um, that roll center. So by having one end of the vehicle with a track bar, and I'm, I'm putting this in real simple terms, right? There, there, there are very technical terms for all of the instant centers and roll centers and all these things, but I'm trying to explain it in a way that, that it would make sense to um, everybody. This makes it so that when you side hill, the vehicle feels stable. If you put a four link, a double triangulated on the front and the rear, the body will just flop over. It, it has no resistance whatsoever. So um, you, you know, everybody starts talking about all this stuff and, oh, I got this design and I'm going to do this and that. I mean, they have no idea. They, they've never done it before, obviously. So what else you got? Uh, Eric Trujillo, I'm starting a three link long arm setup in the rear of my 08 JKU. I need the lower frame side brackets and arms, but can't get a hold of anyone about getting just these parts. Do you sell just those parts? We do, um, but it, it requires calling in and talking to one of our guys. That, that's not available um, just through our website. So, yeah, if you want something special, and uh, this is a busy time of year, so special requests are, yeah, pretty tough, but call in and talk to one of my guys. They're still there for another 10 minutes, so. Yep. Uh, Pat Whitney, hey Tony, I put a Rock Chalk 60 in my 05 TJ LJ. Yeah. Uh, and am in the process of building a 91 Ford Kingpin 60 for the front. Should I worry about it being five inches wider than the rear? And would just putting wheel spacers in the rear to match be okay? Always great to see you in Moab. Uh, uh, all great questions. So um, first thing is the offset on that 60 you bought is not right. So what, what happens is, is they, they make this shorter so you don't have anywhere to mount this control arm mount. And they make that side longer. Okay, In a Jeep, we, we need the, the differential moved over. This is all part of our specs that... When we tell you we've got our own axles with Curry and Dynatrack, we're not kidding. Like how much the knuckles are rolled, the pinion angle, the width, all this stuff is everything that we've specced out um, through our experience and in CAD, right? So this, th there's no mistake to any of this stuff. So when you buy junkyard axles, you start getting all this random stuff. Beside the fact that they're going to come with giant brakes, eight lugs, you know, you, you got a bunch of other things you got to deal with. Then 
now you're talking about this, I, and I love this because this is typical, right? You go get one rear end, it's this wide, you get the front end, it's this wide. So, I mean, it's eight lug, you could run spacers. I'm not a fan of spacers. You could do what's called retubing, where they drill out these plugs, they push the tube out, they uh, put a brand new tube in, make them both the same width. Um, so th there are some options, but what's happening is, is the cheap junkyard axles have now turned into very expensive stuff. So um, just keep that in mind. John JD asked what your thoughts are on the Fusion 4x4 axles. Uh, no thoughts. No thoughts. Uh, let's see. How important, this is Brandon Pittenger, how important is it to wrap the exhaust with either type kit? Yeah, very. So um, just like we show here, especially when you get around joints and stuff, um, you know, everything here, and I mean everything, you know, er right down to, you know, our most basic vehicle that we have in our fleet will have a, a wrapped exhaust. And uh, we recommend DEI, Design Engineering Inc. We sell it, you can buy it from them, you can get it from Summit, Jags, like everywhere has it. It's, um, it's really good stuff. We usually, yeah, this is, uh, what their logo logo looks like so um good stuff they, they make everything little booty protectors to um, exhaust muffler covers and then the wrap like you see um there and that um this stuff up in here you know that sticks onto the bottom and the firewall um all really good stuff yep ed van uh, Vindas, Vindasius, I have an 85 CJ7 going to three link front. Should the upper link be the same like length as the lowers? It's, it's almost impossible to do that. So um, you can see even here on this one, um, it, what we do is we try and get that close. It, it reduces what's called drive shaft plunge here on the splines, okay? I, I wouldn't get crazy about it um, it's, it's not the end of the world. And by the way, um, you know, in some cases, like a CJ, the pumpkin is on the other side, right? So a lot of the time you got to move the upper link over to the passenger side instead of on the driver's side. So it just kind of depends on your setup. Um, if you look at like, uh, Jeff Perkins Jeep, he's got a little tower over here. He didn't, he didn't put it up on top of the diff. He's got a little tower and that's where his link runs to. So um, there's lots of options. That's why um, I always advise you guys, you know, to call in and talk to my guys. Every single guy over there that you're talking to has a built Jeep just like mine. And, and by the way, I am one desk away from them. So if you stump them with a question they can't answer, they're going to put you on the phone with me. So um, yeah, by all means, call in, use us. Uh, Zach Beck, how difficult would you say it is to put on a tracer kit with a stock motor? He does not say what kind of GPS. It's well, that does would be it come day. with very comprehensive instructions? Super comprehensive. Could a guy do it in his garage with no lift, with a welder, or uh, are they better off taking it to a shop? No, no, not at all. And so, a couple of options for you. First off, Chris Moore, who's probably on here, um, is has done or is doing like four different tracers himself in his garage. Um, but we know several people who've done it. It's not that tough. You just take your time. You gotta get some jack stands. These are some big ones or put them on little uh, stands. Uh, but you know, you take your time and you do it. And uh, there are very comprehensive instructions for both the, the tracer and the elite. And uh, they, you know, the nice part is, is literally you can buy like this is a, a tracer link right here and uh, just has a cover over the aluminum uh, these come done so you literally screw in your johnny joint lock down your jam nut we tell you the exact length to make them you, you if you just follow the instructions you don't have to cycle it and do all kinds of crazy stuff to figure out if everything's going to clear we've already figured all that out for you yep uh, Kevin Hudson, a JK, LJ, or YJ, what would you build? I think I know the answer, but I know <laughs> you love the Terramoto. I, I do. Um, however, you know, a JK is four inches wider than an LJ. 
So, um, you know, that that alone, depending on where you live and the kind of wheeling you do, makes a huge difference, right? So, um, I don't know. We're, uh, in fact, let's, uh, since we have this queued up, let's, let's go over here because um, I'm sure at some point Jamie's going to want to do the same thing in the growler, and then we'll find out how important that extra three inches is. So this is, um, as many of you know, back door out at the hammers. And uh, this is a very slippery rock obstacle. There's two different attempts in here. Okay. So part of what we're trying to show you is that the dampening control and the anti-squat um, are part of what makes this work. And um, what you're after is, it'll, it'll replay again. Um, you, you want to make sure that the tires don't start bouncing. All of you have probably experienced that, you know, where you go to crawl something and the, the whole thing starts bouncing. And everybody says, stop, stop, stop. You're going to break something. So you can see how it's keeping those tires pushed down. The anti-squat is what makes them look for traction. And uh, I, I know everybody talks about all these terms and it's hard to, you know, have any context to, to gr grasp these things, but um, that's why I wanted to show you, you know, this kind of vehicle um, and, and what's happening here, because it, it is important. Um, and I think this day I had nine pounds of pressure in the tires. They're not as low as I normally run them. So, um, and by the way, this first ledge is only half the challenge. The next ledge is just as tough. So. Um, but you can see that next time I did it, I, I was just a little bit faster, maybe a mile or two, an hour faster. This, this one was more of a, a crawl. Um, yeah, that was the first, first one. Yeah. So um, we went out when we did this. This day, I did it seven times in a row. So... Um, and then once you know what to expect, you know, of course, you can hit it with a little more oomph. Uh, but this is where wheelbase plays a big part. You know, having that longer wheelbase is, um, you know, pretty important. So, um, yeah, nice little pause for a video there. What other questions you got? Uh, Eric Lloyd, which is a better rear setup for an FJ40, the double triangulation or single? Uh, depends on what you're trying to do with it. Most of the time, people choose the single triangulated. Um, it has a minimal amount of rear steer. It's, it's only about uh, four degrees at, at worst case. And uh, you can run a 14 inch travel shock with that and, and it's very reliable. And um, by the way, we sell that bracket kit for $99. So uh, for the three link front and the four link rear frame side are only $99 each. So check those out. It's a crazy good price. Roger Herman, what maintenance is required on those joints on the arms? Just regrease, or should they be pulled down every so often? You know, it, it would depend. Um, if if I was um, checking this, you know, I, again, just like um, we talked about on the steering, you know, I'll get up and grab this control arm, and I want to see does it move. If it moves easy, then I want to investigate a little more. I'll pull the bolt and I'll check this to see. You know, if it feels like it's too sloppy, if it is, you just buy four bucks worth of brand new urethane, you pop it in, regrease it, and you're good to go. So, um, you know, and honestly, I think I've done that once. So, um, yeah, really, um, they're, they're, as long as you put a little grease in them, you just don't want to run them dry. So... Dave Rupert, what does Tony think of coil springs that are dual or triple rate not coilovers but traditional coils you know the, those were really designed um for a uh, load right so um you know they're they're trying to give you a nice ride when the vehicle's empty and then as you load it down they're they're trying to not squat too much and still give you a a decent ride so that's what those are really made for it's a little bit different than what we talk about in terms of dual rate coil over uh, because that's all adjustable. We can we can kick in when we want that second spring rate. So, uh, yeah, good question. Owen Amos, is there a better year of JKU to build a Terramoto clone? Um, so if you're going to go that route, I would buy 
um, the cheapest one you can find because you don't you don't care about anything except for the tub. So um, you're not you're not reusing the engine, the transmission, the seats. Like you're you're literally gutting the whole thing, every wire, everything. So um, just pick up the cheapest. It could be salvage title. It could be whatever. Just get. I mean, honestly, you know, if it's somebody who blew up the motor and it's sitting in their yard and their wife's on their back, you know, that guy might be willing to pay you to get it out of there. So, you know, just uh, find one that somebody in their mind is like, this thing's junk. You know, I'd be happy just to give it away. So um, a lot of the time they're, they're out there. I've, I've bought them before. So. Stephen Horsch, what are good shocks to use for a coil spring lift kit? Um, so the, the name brand ones that you're used to, King, Fox, um, I know that uh, Radflow's out there, Swayaway's out there. there. There's definitely a few companies out there. Um, th those are probably the ones that I'd stick with, you know, that, that are, you know, American made and good quality. Um, I know Bilstein, you know, they're out there too. So just a lot of them, it's all about availability. They're really hard to come by. So uh, Larry White. Uh, has a 2016 JK Rubicon. Would like to know if the Metal Cloak two and a half inch kit is okay for a daily driver with 30 inch tires, 35 inch tires. Yeah, it's okay. It's just, that's gonna be one of those ones with the rubber instead of, you know, a ball and urethane. Um, so you just gotta know that, that I mean, that's, that's what's in the factory control arms is the vulcanized rubber. So um, just keep that in mind, I mean, you know, granted, they're using a little bit nicer um, tubing and stuff than the factory did, but um, just be mindful of that. That's all. But it, it should be fine. Andy Orlando, curious on your JLU with everything happening under the hood, is the Elite fitting a 2.5 times 14 inch up front or is it limited to a 12 inch? So it, it, we, we designed a kit so that it'll take a 14, but the first one we're doing is 12. And I'm running a 3.0 um, coilover with internal bypass, so IBP. So um, you can run a 2.5, but I'm going all the way to 3.0 right out of the gate. Yep. On the I don't know if you remember this, but on the Terramoto, I started with 2.5s and then eventually moved up to 3.0s. So this time I'm just going right 3.0. Jake Rocha, YJ front and rear four link 118 inch wheelbase. He's wanting five inch shock up travel. We'll need 100 pound or 150 pound springs in rear. With such light springs, should I be worried about off camber stability? Well that, okay, so our, was it our last tech talk where we had the spring rate chart? Um, that you, what you want to do is roll those secondary nuts down and have that second spring rate kick in uh, the moment that you start to tip, right? Um, just beyond what I would call ride travel. And uh, that'll make that feel a lot better. Or, you know, you can add a, a light rate sway bar like the Rock Jock anti rock sway bar. Yep. Yep. What else you got? Um, we are nearing the end of our tech talk. We've got a of couple course. more questions. I don't even think I made it through. We're well over an hour. Yeah. Um, was there anything else super important that we had in here, Alex? We had that. Well, We're we can finish up uh, on th uh, Thursday. Uh, I, I think this was just talking about like what track a track bar. bar does, that it keeps the front end under your vehicle. So you know, using a good quality one, using one that's straight as possible, all of those things matter. So, and what we do is we put a heim on this side, it's hiding right back here because we keep it in line with the drag link. That's how you eliminate bump steer. And we put a heim on this end and we put a Johnny on this end. And um, that way it isolates the noise from the frame out here at the frame. And down here, we don't care. It can make all the noise it wants. And that's got a giant three quarter inch bolt through it which is, by the way, twice the size of your factory one. Um, lots more questions. Okay, we can answer so a few go more. All, go, well, go offline and finish the questions. But thank everybody for tuning sure. in. Sure, yeah, we thanks had, everybody. We had uh, over 230, wow. actually 245 <laughs> viewers today. Awesome. So we had a great show. I'm glad this is a popular topic for everybody, and I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to everybody's question. I will go back and uh, answer some more. 
Um, and of course, you know, it, guys, if you can't find what you need on our website, call in, talk to my guys. Um, they're a wealth of information. And um, yeah, I, I, we appreciate it. And uh, I hope you find this helpful. And uh, of course. And where are you going to be doing Thursday's Tech Talk? From Arizona. From, from Arizona. Yeah, I'll be out in Arizona with the Terramoto. Awesome. So. Okay. We'll uh, we'll be doing it out there. So, cool. all right, and we can we can talk more suspension or whatever everybody wants. So I've okay. got a, a long list of topics now that everybody filled out the survey. So perfect. That's awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody. Guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen. Have a thank great, you again. Great week. Have a great next few days till I see you on Thursday.